welcome back to my channel. Um, my Matalan cushion arrived today, um, which I got, of Mat I got for Matalan uh, for only £5 and I couldn't resist it. It's um, an Arctic Fox cushion. It's got an Arctic Fox on it. Um, and yeah, I like it. It's going to go in my bedroom. Um, it's just really pretty. It's, it's, it was um, it's technically, well, it's, it was in their Christmas cushions range, although it's, I'm going to have it up all the time because it's not like, it's not like a Christmas, it's like, not like a Christmas cushion in like an obvious way. Um, I guess it's cr marketed as Christmas just because it's got like stars on it and stuff um, and wintry I guess. Um, but I, I, it's a really nice cushion and obviously it's got Arctic Fox in it so I just had to get it um, and it arrived today, made my day. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, in, uh, in this video um, I thank you for your comments. Um, I just want to say, by the way, I know one of you mentioned um, in reference to Autism Pride um, about how um, it's more linked to kind of how a community sort of, um, or it can be linked to how a community um, campaigns against discrimination and tries to make life better for autistic people and like pride around the achievements of the community. I guess a bit like gay pride, where the pride can be more around kind of the gains made by the gay community and like fighting against discrimination and things like that. I completely get that. Um, yeah, there can be a sense of pride in that direction and I've got no problems with that at all, that sense of pride, because that's obviously not to do with like the condition itself, it's to do with like the achievements made by a group of discriminated people in like getting their rights met and stuff. So that type of pride obviously falls under the achievements type of pride, which is a genuine type of pride and completely legit. Um, Unfortunately, though, I have come across some autistic people who seem to be, like, going on about how proud they are to, like, have their condition and stuff, not not in a kind of, like, overcoming discrimination sort of sense, but, like, as though being autistic is, like, a really great thing and stuff. Obviously, if they want to feel that for themselves, no one can say that's wrong or anything, but it's when they imply that everyone should be feeling their autism like that. And, um, and, and when, like, the, when, like, what pride should actually mean gets lost. Like, if it's associated with achievements that a group has done in overcoming discrimination, that's fine. But, um, like, I don't like it where, like, a neurodiversity movement kind of um, makes pride to be more something about being autistic in and of itself sort of thing, which I just don't think is very helpful. So I hope it answers that one. Um, and also, I understand, as the person mentioned, I completely get that, obviously... Many people in the neurodiversity movement, probably the majority, do have an official diagnosis. So if they are autistic, they're not like just made up of self-diagnosed people. Yep, I completely get that. And I also completely get that, um, not, uh, uh, that, that it, there isn't always alignment between how successful someone is and whether or not they support the NDM. Like, obviously, there are some autistics who struggle a lot, who still support the NDM and stuff like that. And there are also very successful autistics who uh, don't have anything to do with the NDM. Yeah, I completely understand that as well. Okay, so in this video, um, I wanted to talk about another um, another article I came across recently. Um, it's in the American Journal of Psychiatry, um, published in August of 2021. And the title is, let's be clear, but autism spectrum disorder symptoms are not always related to autism spectrum disorder. And um, one of the authors is Catherine Lord. I think. Um, so the article says, the article basically looks at general, at very general um, screening instruments that are sometimes used to tap into social difficulties. Um, that would include screening instruments such as the autism spectrum quotient, but also ones that are a bit more sort of general, um, such as the social communication disorders checklist. These are very broad, sweeping general screening instruments that are sometimes used to sort of tap into social difficulties in the general population. Um, and she says, go, go, are evidence that statements about social deficits, for example, behaviour often disrupts family life, or they are difficult to reason with when upset, are not specific to autism, do not describe the primary deficits in autism, and may not mean the same thing for individuals with ASD and those without. So in other words, some of these um, screening instruments, some of these very broad brush screening instruments are actually tapping into um, social difficulties that may not be unique to autism and that actually occur in many, many different psychiatric conditions and neurodevelopmental conditions and are not tapping into the core features of autism. 
so that someone could score very highly on, say, the social communication disorder checklist and not be autistic. And, yeah, and also, I guess, may not mean the same thing for individuals ASD and those without. So I suppose that's saying that, um, you know, someone with autism might say, for example, um, have behaviour that disrupts their family life, but their, that behaviour might have a very different cause to, say, someone with... Uh, another condition so that the outcome might be the same but there might be very different reasons for it and that, I guess that would require more quality can't say the word it's hard to say I can't say it's just a bit of tongue twister that requires a more qualitative approach um, she says that conflating poor social functioning with autism has been a steadily growing trend in recent years yeah definitely you see it all the time, all, you know, people always assume, basically whenever someone is functioning, has poor social functioning, the default reaction is always say, oh, autism or autistic traits or whatever, ignoring the fact that actually there are many reasons why a person might struggle with social skills and they're not all to do with autism. And I think this is part, and, I've, and I do see this a lot in the neurodiversity movement and this whole, and also the self-diagnosis culture that occurs in the neurodiversity movement. But lots of people are self-diagnosing themselves as autistic, and it's usually, a lot of them are women, not always, um, because they have, like, they see, they see that they have, like, um, some social problems or whatever, or maybe a bit socially shy or a bit socially quirky or something, or find it socialising really exhausting and stuff and yeah some of them might actually be genuinely legitimately autistic of course without an official diagnosis I'm afraid we can't say um, and that's why self-diagnosis is dodgy um, but of course without having this without the context being looked into without evidence of these difficulties from early childhood without kind of like um, and without looking into the causes behind the behaviour, the cognitive causes, because behaviour can have many different causes, you know, it's like the cognitive has to come first, it's cognitive then behaviour, you can't go from behaviour to the root cause, you have to look at the cognitive, as Uta Frith said, um, we don't know, this, this could, there could be many different reasons for it, some might have ADHD, some might have like a psychiatric condition, um, you know, it could be trauma, um, we, you know, it could be extreme social anxiety, we just don't know, and, and unless this is looked into deeper. Um, so as she says, she says, difficulties in reciprocity, so the core autism features include difficulties in reciprocity, basic non-verbal communication and relationships, so those areas are required components of an autism diagnosis. So that's difficulties in reciprocity, so that's like a give and take in social relationships, I really struggle with reciprocity. That's to do with like, say someone else wants to do something, like, I don't know, and you don't want to, it's like kind of like accommodating the other person, or I just can't do that at all, that's part of the reason why I don't have any friends. <laughs> like, yeah, so someone else wants to do something, you can't be asked. you don't want to do it, it interferes with your needs, and you just cut down the interaction then, because you just don't, or don't want to do it. Um, or you do it in a really half-assed way, which kind of still comes across as not really reciprocating. Um, so reciprocity, like sharing feelings, that would be, I guess, things like sharing feelings, kind of sharing in a give and take of conversation, I find that really difficult because I'm always wanting to dominate conversations. So I have learned as I've got older that you have to try not to do that. So I do try, but it's ultimately, it always does come back to myself. <laughs> uh, that's just the way it is. Um, so yeah, reciprocity, that's like one of the core features of autism. It's a biggie for me. Um, yeah, basic non-verbal communication. So yeah, obviously things like, you know, reading body language, like eye to eye gaze, um, using appropriate gestures, understanding gestures in other people, uh, you know, understanding people's tone of voice or responding appropriately to non-verbal communication, you know, all that sort of stuff, basically. Um, and obviously relationships, you know, obviously friendships, you know, I'm mega screwed in that domain, <laughs> always have been. So they're like the core, as she says, you know, they are the core components of autism, that's the core components of autism essentially. But these are not directly addressed by the social communication disorder checklist or the more general instruments because they tap into broader social domains. So they don't tap into those core autism features. Because they're because when we talk about autism as a social disorder, we're actually talking about a very narrow suite of social difficulties, the ones I just mentioned, reciprocity, nonverbal communication, relationships. That's the core of autism. That those those symptoms they have to occur t together, and obviously they have to occur in conjunction with repetitive behaviours for an autism diagnosis. If they occur without repetitive behaviours, you could get a diagnosis such as social communication disorder, 
which is basically um, a type of autism but without the repetitive behaviours, although there is some disagreement as to how that's related to other forms of autism. It's, it's almost like partial autism really, although obviously it can still be very severe in its own right. Um, and there is that, that is a legitimate diagnosis for people who kind of, in a sense, have the social symptoms for autism without the repetitive behaviours. They could get diagnosed social communication disorder. Um, I don't know how often that's used and I'm not sure how widely and I have a feeling that social communication disorder isn't that widely known about. Um, so I have a feeling that some clinicians might simply diagnose autistic even when social communication disorder would be a better descriptor of a person because, and that's, part, and that's a problem really, that we don't really have enough, all the services, are, are, autism is kind of like seen as the biggie. But I think that's a problem because I, I think there are many other conditions that can be just as serious as autism that should also be kind of campaigned, that people should also be aware of because otherwise it's not good for research. Um, so yeah, like I said, reciprocity, basic non-verbal communication and relationships, they're, 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 they're the social areas that are really, they're the requirements for an autism diagnosis. Um, in a sense that is autism, or at least a social part of autism, whereas those other more broad brush social stuff can occur in other conditions, which is why those broader instruments tap into kind of a broader suite of social difficulties that might occur in autism but aren't unique to autism. Because it, it says, those core autism features are not directly addressed by social communication disorder, general instruments, and the more general instruments, because they are less relevant to people without autism, because obviously the more general measures are designed to look at social difficulties in a whole population samples, irrespective of whether someone has autism. But social functioning as a developmental domain is relevant for all, regardless of diagnosis. Okay, I'm going to move over to video number two now, so this video doesn't run out of me, just to carry on talking about the issues concerned with... Um, conflating poor social functioning with autism when it may or may not be the case. So moving on to video number two now.